All right. Hello, everybody. I am with a expert in um, all things NFTs and cryptos and ways to market those and to grow your wealth with those in a cool way. Um, in fact, I'm excited because he's a, he's been our guest before on the Capital Gains Tax Wishes podcast. Today, we're doing a podcast episode um, uh, with him today. And each and every episode, we're, jo we're joined by some of the best real estate, financial, and wealth minds in the world where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspirations. Together, we can make, we can make complex tax referral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. For those who know me, my name is Brett Swartz, and uh, I'll be the host today. Please welcome to the show with me from Dubai, Arvin Kameshi. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced your last name correctly, but you have to help with it. Arvin, how are we doing today, brother? Good. Hi. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And for our listeners getting to know you for the first time, would you give us a little bit more about your story and your current focus? All right. Cool. Uh, so my background is um, marketing uh, and, you know, uh, started at uh, doing marketing for small businesses all the way to public companies. Did have a huge focus on um, paid uh, media, so up to $500,000 a month. Um, I was doing it for investor relationship uh, marketing, which means basically finding investors online, uh, short term, long term for public companies, and then uh, essentially just increasing their stock price and then also making people want to uh, hold on to to their um, to their investment. Like that was that's that was my uh, my uh, predominant, let's say, uh, uh, Predominantly, that's that's why I spend my time on. And then um, in 2021, uh, I uh, you know I, I actually got on this conversation that didn't want to be on, uh, and um, they were talking about NFTs. I already knew about NFTs, but um, that was I, I I suppose very surface level. Uh, didn't think too much about okay if I could make any changes um, or sell NFTs for that matter at all. Uh, and then um, that conversation turned into, OK, well, um, it seems like this is a very, very innovative uh, concept. Uh, and then it was all back then. It was just all about these uh, expensive uh, animal images. Then uh, I uh, started just telling people as well. I said, hey, like, by the way, if um, you know, because I hear so many people talk about it, if if uh, anyone wanted to market their nfts uh i could i could uh, offer some suggestions I've, I've been studying it um and then uh some italian artists came to me sold out his project uh and i didn't even know uh to be honest at that point the technology uh to even um market it as well but he explained to me everything and then that was the the let's say proof of concept for me to just understand everything and i just got really excited about it because i could see literally like you know, the next person I helped was um, was this, um, uh, say, a female who at the time she was, I want to say, 20, 21, 22, never made money online in her life. Uh, so no business experience. Uh, and then she introduced this idea of, of her um, NFT to me. Uh, and then, uh, to be honest, I didn't think she could uh, make a ton of money with... Um, with that concept uh, at the time, uh, but I gave it the best. You know, I gave I gave it the best, and then uh, thirty days later, she made ten million dollars. Uh, and then that, I, I suppose, that was maybe the turning point for me, where I was like, "This is a very serious, uh, uh, let's say, conversation. This is a very serious uh, industry." Um, and then, so kept going with that. Uh, of course, that was a bull market. Then there was a bear market came through, um, and then all the way till the you know very recently. Uh, and by the way, we we kept going. You know, we never never stopped even during the bear market. But until very recently, um, I think it was Bloomberg or some some publication. They literally were asking us. Uh, I found it very ironic that they were asking me, but they were asking me if NFTs are dead, right? And um, so that's been the the whole journey, uh, and. Uh, from from let's say uh just not knowing to just going all the way mm -hmm. to the top and then later people uh you know i suppose uh, uh speculating on whether like there's in, if, even in, any point into that and I, I can speak to that if you want but yeah. that's been the let's say that's been the journey and then um lately i sold out my my own collection uh it was in february 
um, in two minutes. Uh, so yeah, I've been very involved uh, for other people, for myself, uh, and um, really looking forward to speak uh, with you Absolutely. inside this. Arvin's a great background. By the way, you can learn more about Arvin. I'm going to spell the last name for you. It's K-H-A-M-S-E-H. -E okay. And you can find him on LinkedIn or X is the best way to find him. And as well, we did a episode on how NFT brands make $1 million in a day. And that was appeared on uh, March 16, 2022. So you can go check that out on the Capital Gains Tax Solutions podcast um, by searching YouTube and you can search how, how NFT brands make 1 million a day um, and you'll find it. Um, but okay, so a lot there, really cool. I wanna touch on current crypto and NFT market. Mm -hmm. What's your take on it? Um, what's your feel? You know. Bitcoin, let's say, hit even all-time highs again just a couple of weeks back, right? Three weeks ago yeah. or so. And now it's hovering around 64000 a coin. How is that affecting NFT, the NFT market and the crypto market as a whole? Just gener what's your general thoughts? Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, so obviously, I think even in what you just mentioned about the million dollar, um, that was the so beginning, beginning of the NFT. Like I, I also said, initially it was like 5 million, 10 million launches. Then it went on to just like a million. Um, but then again, that million, uh, it's just very strange industry. That million, you would make it like that, I suppose that team or founder would make it in a day. So it's still very, very uh, fast paced, very um, exciting. Um, and then um, all the way to, uh, let's say, more more recently. Um, and I would say really from starting from May 2022, uh, there's been that conversation. Okay, is the market sentiment uh, negative in the crypto um, and NFT, and they're, they're connected. Uh, and uh, what? And then what's the point if if there's no uh, let's say if there's no demand for it anymore, right? If the hype is gone. So the hype of the NFT was highest in November, let's say um, 2021, um, and then uh, then right, let's say up until two months ago, um, it was still uh, very low. Uh, and then it, because of the crypto, uh, it got, um, uh, back, back on, uh, just because the, the all time high, as, as you mentioned as well. And, and also just, um, I think there's the speculation that it could, it could, that the, the narrative of the NFT and the hype of the NFT could come back up. And because of that speculation on the narrative, then there's just that little increase let's say on uh, on the de on the demand for nfts but um but really uh, so what what is it now um it just uh, the current state of things uh the nft launches typically now they're uh somewhere around 200 to 400 uh, thousand uh, uh launches so uh, 200 to 400 uh, thousand dollar uh raises let's say uh and people typically do them somewhere around one month to two months. So they spend a um, good amount of time. Uh, and I really mean it like they spend a lot of time uh, with their team, uh, building socials um, and then promoting, promoting NFTs, all that. So, uh, so the first, first point is fine. Uh, I suppose um, the, uh, the potentials, the potentials of it was very high um, 2021. Uh, and then 2022 start like really going uh, down. Um, and then it got like really low to the point where like literally I was being asked by publications, different places, like uh, everyone's just talking about like NFTs are dead, NFTs are dead. Um, and then uh, that changed again, like it's it's on the rise again. However, I don't think um, the NFT uh, narrative uh, this time is going to be the same as the hype. Um, I see the new narrative of the NFTs being uh, about let's say tokenization of uh, real estate uh, being about tokenization basically real world assets uh, let's say art artworks so there's a there's a project that they do uh, tokenization of um, arts from uh, 1415 so real uh, real life paintings let's talk uh, about that for a second i want to go on two two ways of that so the tokenization of real estate or hard assets or art right i think this is really powerful as well i want to dive into maybe tokenization of like sculptures right what that looks like as well mm -hmm. if you could own a piece of let's say uh, a, a vatican piece like the david or some other like amazing piece like what that would look like um so w walk us through what's the number one secret to the tokenization of real estate and or real world artwork <laughs> like sculptures cool. or paintings yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so 
to to explain that, uh, I will provide the context of, for example, for and they're different, by the way, real estate and art, they're different. So uh, as for real estate, uh, there has been uh, a handful of projects that they've attempted to uh, tokenize uh, real estate. There's um, there's one in Dubai by one of the largest uh, development companies, uh, Imar, uh, where they've um, they've started, they've uh, built community, they've been uh, they've uh, to some extent they built community around it. But there's a not, uh, but I haven't seen really any any let's say concrete uh, let's say accomplishments um, uh, to to my knowledge. Um, but then uh, there's another project that they have, uh, I believe, six or seven. Uh, real estate, physical real estate in Dubai, they have bought um, and they've tokenized it. Now, what that means is, let's say if I were to want to buy a one bedroom uh, in Dubai and the price of that depends on, of course, the area, but let's say if it's um, one million, uh, one million dollar, then um, and I let's say I just happen to have only ten thousand dollars and I want to get into real estate. Uh, the accessibility um, is the is the the value of tokenization because now I get to actually a become an investor um, uh, have some passive uh, income because that one bedroom uh, and this is by the way it's happening right now in this project that they they're doing this uh, that that one bedroom could be rented I could based on the amount of share um, I have um, which is assigned by the number of NFTs I buy. And then I could uh, receive, uh, let's say, passive passive income or or let's say short short term rental uh, or long term rental income, um, and so so that's the that's the value of it. Um, and then um, they've done it. They've done it successfully. Uh, six projects uh, and people are um, receiving the um, let's say the the income based on based on their shares. Um, and uh, could this become a lot more prevalent uh, pr prevalent uh, i i would say yes because this uh, concept of even timeshare i don't know if uh, you've looked into this uh, but um like for example in whistler um is a big thing and they don't use nfts to um uh, let's say implement the concept but uh in whistler in this specific example uh, it's a uh world known place for people to go ski but if you own a place you don't you don't ski all, all, all year round uh, and there's a certain weeks uh, during every year you want to go skiing. Um, and so instead of you going and renting, you can own um, uh, through this thing called a timeshare. Now, um, they would be better off use NFTs in this specific scenario. And for people who don't know, um, I'll, uh, I'll explain in a second, but uh, that's same concept. It's literally tokenization of uh, the real estate, a physical asset, real real life physical asset, um, and um, I see this this being the this concept being the the new the new narrative. Like that's that's okay. Got it. Um, yeah, yeah let, me, let me jump down that. So so so. By the way, we're speaking with 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 Arvin uh, Kamesh, and you can find him on LinkedIn or X. I'm not even sure if I pronounce that last name correctly, but it's K H A M S E H. Okay, uh, he can pronounce that for here in a minute. It's Kamse. Yeah. Cam said, yeah, I was saying yeah. way off, right? That's okay. No problem. Cam said, actually, how it's spelled, it actually does make sense there. I'm adding too much there. Um, but, okay, so you can tokenize the real estate. So you're selling small individual, like like you call it shares or percentages or yes. percent you know, of it, right? That yes. makes sense. And then so you can get the cash flow from it. And you don't have to come in with a full down payment. You can do yes. small amounts. That makes sense to me. Got yes. it. Now, what about for artwork? Let's imagine it was... Mm -hmm. The most the David, right? Like, and it's in pure gold or pure silver, or pure bronze, right? And it's this magnificent piece. It's worth two hundred million dollars. Exactly. But could I NFT that? And right. say yes. So walk us through how that would work, and then yeah. talk about. I mean, because it's not necessarily producing cash flow, or is it? Because could you could you then evaluate it at you know like two hundred million is what it started out. You can first get the NFT, but let's say there's so much demand for it, you can set the price for. 205 or 210 or yes. 300 million yeah, yeah. and so the value of your nft or share if you will continues to rise and then perhaps you could sell off some of that for dividend payments and yes. or maybe you can margin against it and you could get you could get a, a a note to leverage your nft like walk us through just the, yeah. the overall mechanics of that 
Yeah, yeah. So this is this is very very exciting. Um, so while in at the beginning it was all about the hype and uh, it had nothing to do with the technology. Actually, people didn't even know what the technology of NFT uh, was about. This what we just what we actually just uh, speaking about is literally what, probably one of the coolest uh, use cases of NFT. Now it does, didn't have to be called NFT; it could have been called anything. It has nothing to do with the hype of crypto. Uh, this it, the NFT happens to be the only technology that can actually facilitate this process. Now um, you said what what it would look like for for art. So. In, in the example of the art that you said uh, is 200 million, I I can speak for myself. I don't like every weekend, I don't go uh, you know shopping $200 million uh, paintings, um, but I do have art, um, digital and physical. So if uh, all of a sudden you told me, hey, you could own a piece of something historical, something that is, um, uh, I mean, meaningful to you. It's been meaningful uh, to many others um, in the past. Um, has a, has an actual value, um, meaning by an appraiser, uh, uh, and um, there's certificates for it and everything. And then, um, and then you say, hey, you can actually own a piece of that with, let's say, ten thousand dollars, or like even a few hundred dollars, right? So that's first is the accessibility, which we talked about real estate as well, right? The second piece piece into that is um, it's also very interesting is that, okay, so now let's say the art uh, is auctioned, like right? So for example, um, I think every uh, uh, six months or so, there are some big auctions for that kind of art. Um, usually they're, they're sold into like private, uh, let's say art collectors, but if they do auctions, usually twice a, uh, twice a, twice a year. Now, if uh, that $200 million art artwork was actually auctioned and sold for whatever price i as the owner of the nft let's say I, I own 10 nfts and 10 nfts means 10 little let's say little pieces of uh this this uh, physical art uh, so once this art is sold uh, then the proceeds like even um uh, the of course it depends on the project and depends how this is set up but um that I could get a part of. Um, if this artwork is actually being, um, let's say, shown at some exhibition, um, rental, or however way they're making money with this um, with this art, I could still uh, get a get a piece a piece of that uh, revenue as well. And then uh, and then you said, okay, could could my NFT have its own value and its own path into um, incurring like. Uh, interest and actually go up in value itself. Um, it can, um, of course, it's a speculation, but it can, but it also has happened um, in the past. Now, I want to give you another example. So Gary V, for example, has um, a, his events, uh, I think twice a year or once a year, and he uh, basically sells his tickets to his um, his uh, event uh, using NFTs. Um, and then uh, let's say you bought the NFT and then the event was just like last week and you're like, well, wh why am I still holding on to this digital, uh, uh, let's say asset? Uh, I, I should just sell it. Like th th there couldn't be possibly any value to holding on to something um, that was representing an event um, in the past. Uh, however, what we've observed, and this is not just this scenario, but I'm just giving one example. It can take its own path, meaning this digital asset could actually go up in value, even though the event was complete and technically has no no longer any utility, because it serves a um, it, it's like a timestamp into the history. And what's so special about NFTs? So just first of all, what NFTs is basically you could think of it as um, let's say a series of uh, uh, characters and letters. Uh, and uh, that points into, in the case of what people would know, it points into, it's like almost like a hyperlink into uh, a, an image that's sitting somewhere um, in some server. Um, and that's the, so people know it by that image. That's why in the past used to be, it's like, oh, it's just expensive, you know, animal pictures. But that, uh, that let's say, uh, combination of characters is specific. It's exclusive. 
There's only one version of it. So that's why they use it in a ticketing system. And that's why even in the example of the art, um, it's um, it's the best technology to use because that's you that's the only way you would know, for example, top right um, in the very top uh, uh, right corner, let's say the corner of this um, artwork, I am the owner of that piece, for example, right? Okay. Now, uh, let, let, let me break finish. in a little bit. Let me break into a little bit. So like, so, yeah. Okay, uh, artwork. Okay, so let's let's, let's, let's match a two hundred million dollar piece of art, right? Which is really practical here, right? And yeah. how do a how do we secure the NFT to the actual art? Like, and uh -huh. who's 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 the gatekeeper of the NFT, right? Like, if I think yeah. of it like gold, you know, the old gold standard, right? We we secure, you know, the dollars to the gold. Now that that's yeah. been, you know, it's a disaster now where we're at with the debt and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you know, just think about that. Like, let's imagine it was a two hundred million dollar you know, silver David, right? It's yeah. this amazing piece of art. And we want to put it, we want to make this an NFT opportunity. Maybe we can say 30% of it or 50% of it. We want to sell off to NFTs. Yeah. The other 50% is somewhere else. Walk us through how that would actually be secured and how that yeah. would be transparent and how you couldn't hack that NFT to take ownership of that. Walk us through that. Okay. okay so, so the security, the security of um, the, the the NFT well obviously it's uh, it sits on I mentioned uh, earlier it sits on some server right and these servers are uh, supposedly you would pick servers that are secure um, as secure as uh, the your website and everything else that you know you for example you use um, Amazon like a lot of people use Amazon AWS uh, servers um, and so we're talking about the same level of security this is not something new as far as security that's just being introduced it's the same same thing we've done everything on the internet any assets websites um, whatever we, we we held it's the same level of security um, now the interesting thing about nfts is that it happens to be even uh, in a sense even more distinguishable because it sits on the blockchain um, and a blockchain think of it as uh, let's say a sets of blocks of data um, and then there's only one place one version of that combination of characters that exist. There's no second one. There's no third one. So that's um, and that's uh, connected to the the buyer and how it's connected to the buyer in just like real life, maybe talking simpler. So um, let's say I have a crypto wallet. Um, I purchase the NFT. The NFT is in my wallet and then uh, that NFT in the metadata in basically let's let's just say the back end of that that nft uh there is a line written uh let's say um let's say uh r uh 25 55 555 something like that where it's the exact location of the uh where my piece on that piece uh, on that uh, physical art is basically where where my share is right um and it's it's written into that uh, NFT, uh, so it's um, it cannot be changed. I cannot. Uh, I mean, that's the whole point of like blockchain. I cannot. Uh, I cannot edit it. Uh, no one can. Uh, no one else can edit it. It's not even like we're not even talking about like um, authorities or uh, let's say someone else with more power, more knowledge, anything like that. It just it, it's not something to be edited. It cannot be edited. Um, and then. So that's as far as the security side of it. And then you said, okay, well, okay, how does how does this work? So the uh, artwork will sit in some vault, right? So some uh, place that's safe. Uh, and then uh, you would have uh, an appraiser um, come in and actually, I mean, you can get it from like Christie's or like different places um, and actually evaluate the, the art. And then you will get a certificate and saying, hey, this art is, value is X, Y, Z. Then based on that, you can create a, I mean, as simple as really like a spreadsheet with uh, just saying, okay, if you own one NFT, that means you have, uh, let's say one, let's say one tenth of this, uh, this art, right? Obviously in that case, you would have a lot more, maybe one in thousand of that uh, pieces. But, um, uh, and then based on that, whatever, that setup is which is built by the let's say the gallery in this scenario or the founder of that project is is set up is being communicated to people who are going to buy 
by the the, the digital asset in this scenario um, and so they know uh, and no one else can change it because that also sits on uh, the blockchain as well uh, and uh, yeah so that's the security side of it and then that's as, as far as like um, getting into the logistics of it like how how that would work um, did I answer your question but ask me more you did I, I think you did yeah. it makes sense okay, so, so let's keep it really simple let's imagine this it's a hundred million dollar yeah. piece of artwork right let's just say we divide it by 100 so we make 100 nfts there yes, yes. it's a million dollars each per nft to buy and yes. so i'm the owner of this art piece and i'm like all right it's 100 million bucks we got the appraisal here here's a, here's a certificate here's the yes. police here and now uh, i'm gonna go for sale right i want to sell yes. 13 of these nfts and by this date and i'm like okay i can let you guys bid for it or i can sell it right for 13 uh, million each Right, maybe we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And let's imagine I do sell it for 13 million. I give it 13% of this $100 million piece of artwork. And now let's say I want to go sell it <clears throat> for $100 million the next day. How do how how do I, as the person who owns, let's say I bought the 13, 13 NFTs, how do how do I know as the buyer that they're gonna pay me first, right? Before they could sell it. Right. Like what is protecting me as the owner? If I live in Dubai or live in, you know, Florida or California, and let's say the art art piece is in Washington, right? Yeah. How do I have security that if the person in Washington sells it for a hundred million dollars, that yeah. I would get my 13 million back? Is that making some sense? Yes. yes. So, so uh, first, uh, of first of all, all, you do you do need to have uh obviously uh, a law firm involved to create structures so it's not something like just um you know someone just writes some google doc and then you know turns it into a pdf but um as far as the so just on i guess on a high level is is, is what i would say but uh on as far as the how how you would sell this how much would you be able to sell it would the price go up down uh how would you know when it will go up down all this stuff right so first of all where you would sell it let's say the NFT that you bought of that same same art um, sits on uh, Solana blockchain all of a sudden, right? Uh, and then uh, it's uh, automatically aggregated into the top marketplaces for Solana and top marketplaces for digital assets. Now, in this scenario, would be NFTs for Solana, which would be, for example, the top one is Magic Eden. Then it's, um, I think there's another one um, that just recently came out. Um, sniper something I, I can't remember the name but um, there's open sea so on and so forth right now um, are these marketplaces uh, having users uh, for someone who doesn't know like that they would actually that would there, will there be demand for someone to actually come and buy it so they have millions of users each of these uh, each of these um, marketplaces and the volume is actually people can go check their volume there's a there's a website for uh, I, I don't remember the, the exact website, but it's something they can go check. But anyways, it's a lot of money. And so, uh, yes, there is demand for it. They can put it in the marketplace. Now, would, would they be able to put it on marketplace for 100 million and then um, Im immediately, uh, you know, someone someone will just uh, uh, grab the grab the art? I don't know. Maybe not. Right. Depends on depends on the uh, I suppose who who's um, who's the artist and blah, blah, blah. But it happens on the marketplace. The marketplace is is the escrow between um, you as the seller um, and then the buyer. So the buyer connects the wallet, says, "Hey, I'm bidding at this price." Uh, the sell, uh, and then you as the seller saying, "Hey, this is the price. Um, maybe I'm accepting it or not accepting it. Like maybe larger price that you would be accepting." And then you say, "Yes, accept it." Uh, the um, art. Uh, well, the not art, the the actual um, NFT gets exchanged between between your wallets. It's no longer so you got your money, um, and then uh, the the buyer got their uh, got their NFTs. Now, do you still own a share of that physical artwork? No, you no longer have a share um, into. And I keep saying share. That's just how I would say. I think it's maybe easier for people to understand, but. Um, uh, let's say ownership, right? But uh, n you no longer have ownership, and that new person has ownership into that uh, into that artwork. Now, it's possible. It's possible. First of all, you could sell it at any price, uh, even if the price of it that you bought, uh, you bought it for thousand dollars. All of a sudden, oh, my, I mean, in this case, it was I think you said um, ten million or whatever it was. Uh, you could you could do larger price, lower price, whatever it is. It could also based on 
unrelated unrelated scenarios to uh, crypto, um, uh, this price could go up. Like for example, let's say all of a sudden, let's say uh, the person, uh, let's say family member, like descendants of that artist, all of a sudden, they want to do meet and greet with everyone who has that um, NFT, right? And then boom, like the price could jump, even though the appraisal of that um, physical piece is going to stay as it, as it was, which uh, in, uh, in this case, we said 200 million, the price of the NFT uh, could change, could actually go up. Um, so obviously it's not, you know, the case for everyone. It's just all the speculation, but that's, that's the, the potential. potential. Got I got it. I knew this. There's ways to create experiences around this that could in, in, in increase the value and just a marketplace for it. Cause not everyone has $200 million. They might have a thousand, they might have a million, they might have 10 million and they can buy a percentage and share of that. Yeah. In this scenario, it's a hundred million dollar piece of art. It's a hundred, hundred NFTs issued. I bought 13 of them, but back to that piece of it, right? It's secure. There's an attorney. The marketplace is like the escrow. Okay. Got all that. But this art place is in a, and I guess you, you need to trust the person who has, who's holding the art. Right. And perhaps you can put it in a third party, a third party vault, right? Yeah. Where, where it's not the original owner of the art. They go, look, we're going to this third party place this third party escrow, this yeah. legal vault that's going to hold it. And then they're going to connect with the marketplace. And, and I guess the NFTs can be traded any which way, but if, if the whole piece goes to be sold, then the, the vault would have to say, Hey, everybody freeze like, or, or stop. We're going to be, this is under escrow. It's under contract to sell for 150 million. Let's just say, for example, right. And then that would auto, you know, I guess if it did sell for $150 million, they'd have options to get the cash out. It would all go to escrow. And then their value, let's say they bought it at a million, is now worth, you know, 1.5 million, right? I think that's the math is right there. Um, and uh, and that way they could, then they could cash out there or their NFT just went up. Is that a fair summary? Am I getting it right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's the potential, that's the potential scenario. Yes. Um, okay. And, um, this is so now some some people may be thinking has this been done before uh there is um at least one project i know that they're in this process uh to do this uh and uh there are marketplaces going to be built for this specifically for uh oh, um, specifically for this kind of art so we have marketplaces already for digital assets for nfts but if you would think like would um someone who is the buyer of 100 million dollar um uh, artwork uh, sit on um, let's say magic and open sea all the time no th that's new to them they wouldn't know about these things right this is that's new to them uh, however uh, there are uh, it's in process uh, where ma uh, marketplaces specifically for let's say uh, art that's larger um, in price or maybe a specific time uh, uh, in in the, in history like let's say I don't know 14 15 for example uh, and uh, there's um, those are being built um, as as we speak, uh, and um, it, there there is also uh, I suppose another. So you you spoke you spoke about okay. So uh, it's the basically you have the owner part ownership into into that physical physical art. Um, if they did any, for example, uh, rentals or any any some sort of. Uh, any uh, any way they used even the ip of the the, the project they used it in um, any sense the uh, nft holders would be able to get get their rewards get their um get the piece into into the action yeah. as well but but also like there could be other things as well like i this was um i just made this up like uh, obviously there there could be many many uh additional like services like for example if you buy into that nft maybe they would also uh tell you uh, they will also give you a let's say um art uh advisory services where they would tell you like what what art to buy next maybe you you'd be part of a, some club of uh, some sort of like a like a art owners uh so this it's it's a lot more um uh, let's say uh open than i described it i just gave one one example that's so it just simple makes sense for people Absolutely. Arvin, this has been absolutely amazing. My, uh, my mind and, uh, is, uh, is growing with and, and opening up to these capabilities, but if you want to learn how to, uh, to, to do more of this, um, and learn more about type of stuff that Arvin is doing, you can find them on LinkedIn or X. 
It's Arvin and it's K H A M S E eight. S E H you can find them. Um, and as well, we can defer capital gains taxes on NFTs and cryptocurrency in case you're exiting multiple million dollar exits. In fact, we just did our first NFT just a few weeks ago. Um, we've done Bitcoin and Ethereum um, over 13 and a half million dollars before the last crypto crash. And so we are, we're focusing on, on that as well for people who are out there curious about how that works. You can go to capital gains, tax solutions.com. Arvin, we are running out of time. Um, are you ready for the lightning round? Let's do it. All right. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back to your 25-year-old self, what's the gold, one golden nugget make sure you tell yourself to do? I would surround myself with uh, very capable, competent men. Perfect. Great answer. Uh, second question, what's the number one book you've recommended or gifted the most in the past year? Number one book, I would say... I, there's a book called Self-Reliance by um, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Perfect. Uh, question number three, uh, what's the number one way you're using ChatGPT? Uh, I've been, I built a, my own CRM. Um, I've built my own ca like calendar, every single automation that you can think of just using ChatGPT. So it's amazing. Awesome. Uh, next question. Um, what are you most curious about right now? I would say uh, what's going to happen in the you know next, let's say next few weeks inside uh, inside crypto. It's obviously it's the it's a very significant significant time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, wh why do you say that? It's just for those who don't know what's significant about it. And then, what do you think about the Bitcoin having coming up as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's. I mean, this is obviously we we can think about it and speculate all we want. It's it's all, obviously it's just until we go through it, we'll we'll, we'll never know. Uh, I I I think it's it's exciting. I think um, I think even if uh, let's say had no bearing in the profits for for um, let's say people involved in Web three, it's just the fact that we're something we're looking forward to has been very exciting. Cool. Excellent. Uh, last question. After all your success, helping all the people you've helped, how do you best stay centered in your values and stay encouraged to charge forward to reach higher heights? I would say yeah, I, I, I would say again, it goes back to the first one, just being being around, around uh, good, competent men and uh, figuring things out, solving problems. Cool. Awesome. Arvin, Arvin thank you for the show. It's been, it's, uh, I'm always learning when I'm with you. Right. And it's really cool. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep using the gifts and talents you've been given to understand and communicate the world of cryptocurrency and NFTs and help people take their projects to profits, right. When exiting and transferring and continue to build what you're building for our listeners who want to get in touch with you, would you mind one last time what's the best place for them to find you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Arvin Kamsey on um, all socials uh, and um, my handles is uh, Arvin K NFT because that's what we got popular for. It's uh, A-R-V-I-N-K-N-F-T um, on all socials, but LinkedIn and uh, LinkedIn and uh, X, I would say those are I'm most responsive. Awesome. Thanks, Arvin, for being on the show. Thank our listeners for listening to the episode of multiple podcasts. Actually, we're streaming this on the Capital Gains Tax Solutions, Build It to Billions podcast, and also Expert CRE Secrets podcast. You know, each and every episode, we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying um, capital gains tax solutions, right? Clarifying what's even possible with, with real estate, with crypto, with NFTs, things like this to create and preserve more wealth and to uh, be able to monetize what you own, whether it be artwork or real estate in different ways. Things are changing quickly and we wanna be on the forefront of bringing some of the amazing guests like Arvin to the show to listen and to grow with. Um, for those who want help and or are curious how to defer capital gains taxes on the sale of crypto, businesses, real estate, or anything else, for capital gains taxes, you wanna have a plan. We have a solution, it's called the Deferred Sales Trust and it's amazing, we also wrote a book on it, building a capital gains tax exit plan. 
you want to build a team, you want to have a, we're going to have a solution to your, to uh, your challenge. And, uh, and then you want to be able to execute when the timing is right. That's all about what the book's about and what we do. So check that out on Amazon and we appreciate everyone listening.